welcome back to Heather's Plant Boutique. I'm Heather. This is my channel where I talk about all the planty things such as how to care for plants of all kinds. I will be doing more plant tours, DIY projects, plant unboxings, you name it, it'll be here. If you have any video requests, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can also follow me on Instagram at Heather's Plant Boutique for more plant updates and daily content and whatnot. So give that a follow if you would like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to learn more about plants with me. I love learning about plants. I love learning about how to care for them and just being the nurturer. Thank you so much for joining me. In today's video, I have a few things up my sleeve. I will also be talking about the top five common house plant pets. Aphids are common on indoor and outdoor plants. These sap sucking insects are often found in groups feeding on new growth. Several species can transmit plant diseases, particularly viruses, which they pass on during feeding. Aphids are small, soft body, pear shaped insects that may appear brown, red, green, yellow, and are black in color, depending on species. Generally, adults are wingless, but some can grow wings, especially if populations are high. They have two whip-like antennas on the tip of their heads and two tube-like structures at the end of their butts, pretty much. In the spring, wingless females hatch from overwintering eggs and soon give birth to many nymphs. This process is repeated several times and results in huge population explosions. As the colony grows, a few of the wingless females grow wings and fly off to another host. Most aphids do not have to mate in order to reproduce, and they produce live young rather than eggs. First, you want to rinse off your plant and any part of the plant that has aphids. You can use beneficial insects. I know you probably don't want to bring more pests in your house, but they're not a bad pest. They're a really good pest, and they help tremendously. But just keep in mind when you use diatomaceous earth that it can affect your uh, it can affect your beneficial insects. So just keep in mind when you use that because it can and will hurt them, even cause you to lose your whole population of the good insects. So again, keep that in mind. Diatomaceous earth is made up of tiny fossilized aquatic organisms, and it is super small. It's kind of like tiny shards of glass, which kind of scores the soft bodied insects that are bad and it eventually kills them. So it's a long lasting and it is 100% non-toxic so it's safe to use around pets and around your family and just overall a good solution but it's not the most aesthetically pleasing because you have this white powder on top of your soil but it works. Another thing you guys can use is insecticidal soap. I know Bonaid, I think it's this brand. It's by this brand, but it's called Bonneem. Bonneem is a uh, insecticidal soap that contains neem tree seed and other natural resources. And it comes in like a spray bottle like this. It's also made by the same brand, Bonneem, but it'll say instead of neem oil, it will say Bonneem. B O N hyphen me. That spray comes already mixed up and ready to go, so when you get it, you can just spray it on your plants and it's good to go. Mealybugs are found in warm climates. They like to hang out in clusters in a substance that is like cotton. They're white, they're tiny, they are annoying. They come in on your plants from greenhouses or they just accumulate on your plant by it being stressed or you know a lot of factors play into how your plant can get pest it's just a matter of maintenance on your end to make sure they stay pest free I love being an adult I make coffee at 12 o'clock in the morning however at higher numbers the uh, infestation can cause the plant to yellow, wilt, and just look unhealthy and just be very weak. Adult mealybugs are white, oval, and very soft, where the nymphs are small, light yellow, and they are very active when they're young, but once they mature and find a suitable feeding ground, they don't move as much. 
Adult females lay up to 300 to 600 eggs in cottony-like masses on the undersides of the leaves mostly. So just check underneath the leaves to find those cottony masses, those most likely are the eggs. Once the females lay the eggs, hatching occurs within one to three weeks and the nymphs begin to migrate all over the plant. Scary thought, just having bugs invade your plant for no reason, you did nothing wrong, but they're still here. <laughs> Female nymphs pass through three stages, whereas the male passes through five. You can start by uh, pruning off the parts that have a lot of mealybugs. That'll help keep the infestation at a smaller number so you have less to work with and try to get rid of. And once you chop those branches or leaves or whatever off, get them as far away as possible. Just get them out of your house, burn them, do whatever you need to do, just get them away from your plants. Or if you have a small infestation where like it's not taking over your whole leaf, plant, stem, ev any, any of this, you can just take a cotton swab, dab it rubbing alcohol, and dab it on the mealybugs in the nest and whatever you see. It will kill them instantly. And again, I'm going with the beneficial insects. Again, I know, bringing a bug into your house, but it helps. It really does. It keeps the, the worrying at bay for you because you have little soldiers going at war for you. These beneficial insects are mealybug destroyers, ladybugs, and green lacewings. All these guys are very important in getting rid of your mealybug problem. If you want to go that way. Insecticidal soap will work fast on heavy infestation. It is a short-lived natural pesticide. It works by damaging the outer layer of soft body insects, also causing dehydration and death within hours of this insect. Neem oil is also a great way to control pests on your plants naturally. Neem oil disrupts the growth and development of pests and acts as a repellent. It's non toxic to most beneficial insects and pets in humans. So that's good. Also, you apply it every 7 to 14 days or as needed to get rid of mealybugs or any other pest. Neem oil is all a great way. Washing foliage regularly will also discourage pests from making your plants their new home. So just keeping a good, clean plant, it will help it stay happy and healthy also by bringing more light in and keeping pests away. I will do a little recap at the end of this video of a way to prevent pests for you guys so you know how to keep it pest free. <laughs> Mealybugs are attracted to plants with high nitrogen levels and plants with soft growth. I recommend doing the rubbing alcohol method by just dabbing it on the mealybugs and then giving it a good rinse and then treating with neem oil. That is the way I like to do my mealybug treatment. So I recommend that highly. Or if you guys have any other tips or tricks for these pests I just went over so far, let me know below. I like hearing from you guys. Up next is fungus gnats. Fungus gnats are probably my, my uh, least favorite. I guess none of these are my favorite, but if I would rather not deal with these guys, I would be happy as heck. Because I don't get mealybugs that often. I don't get spider mites that often. I don't get thrips that often because I take care of my plants. I wash them, I rinse them, I do my treatments. Fungus gnats are a common pest of plants that are grown indoors, especially when temperatures and humidity levels are high. So be careful to make sure you don't overwater because Fungus gnats thrive on overwatered plants, but if that happens, just allow the soil to dry about two to three inches down. That makes the soil unattractive to female fungus gnats so they cannot lay eggs and they will just move on. They're usually first noticed when the harmless adults are flying around and just being a pester, a nuisance, just in your face all the time but it's the larva stage that you should be worried about because they feed on the root systems of your plant and that can cause total damage to your plant even 
complete loss of your plant. So it's best just to nip it in the butt while you see some and get rid of them because you don't want them to create more larvae and more root problems if there is any. Hopefully it doesn't get that bad because I don't want to, but so far we're okay. But I have beneficial nematodes I'm going to be using sometime this week. I will let you guys know how that works. I'll probably include it in my next video because this one is going to be long as heck. Ooh. I already know that. I've been talking forever it feels like. The babies have a shiny black head with a white, almost transparent, elongated body. They look creepy. I've seen a couple before. They're not cool. No, nope. not a fan. The life cycle from egg to adult can be completed in as little as three to four weeks. That's a lot. They reproduce quick. Because of this, remedies usually require more applications to ensure the eggs in any of the stages of the fungus gnat are completely gone. Plant symptoms that indicate fungus gnats have arrived and are taking over your plants. Su sudden wilting, poor growth, yellowing leaves, the treatment of fungus gnats. Step one, just check your plants before you bring them home. Just stir the soil up a little bit. If there's any fungus gnats that come up out of there, put the plant down and walk away. Using yellow sticky traps will help get rid of the population that is flying around your house and also, fungus gnats are attracted to yellow, so they will just fly right to them. So, yeah. Yellow sticky traps. They're not totally the best thing to look at when you're looking at your plants, but they do help get rid of the fungus gnats or help, ma help maintain the fungus gnat issue at hand. Next up is my favorite. I like to use mosquito bits. Mosquito bits are a biological insect control. They help aid in getting rid of mosquitoes and keeping them away. They also are used for fungus gnats. It should be called fungus gnat bits, you know? You can make a mosquito bit tea by just dumping this into a glass or into a bowl and dumping water in it. Let it steep for about 20 minutes and then pour it through a strainer or a cheesecloth or whatever you want to use. Just make sure there's no chunks. If there is, that's okay. It's just not the best thing to look at, but this is for people who don't want this sitting in their soil. You can either put this directly on top of your soil and then mix it in a little bit, or you can just mix it directly into your soil when you repot your plant. Or you can make a mosquito bit tea. I like the tea because I don't like mosquito bits all up in my soil or on top of my soil, so I do the tea. So. It is a uh, natural biological pesticide and it's safe around pets and humans. It's non-toxic and it contains no harmful residue. So it's really safe. I, don't, I love using this stuff when I have fungus nets, so I recommend it. Nematodes are a microscopic roundworm that feed on the fungus gnat larva. The long-lasting nematodes are safe around your pets and family, so no worries about them harming you or your plants or your pets. So that's another safe, natural way to get rid of fungus gnats. So spider mites are a wind-borne pest. They will come in, surfing in here on their webs from outside or, you know, off a plant you bring in from a nursery, wherever, however it gets. Some plants are honestly just magnets for spider mites and sometimes it's inevitable so just look out for the signs there will be very tight webbing close to the stem of your the stem and the underside of your plant so more so in this area and then I would look in this area in between the leaves because there could be tight webbing in there just inspect your plant if there's very tight webbing movement in the type webbing they are red in color brown in color they can be white even, just... Inspect it, and if you see anything, rinse it off right away. You can treat it with neem oil, you can... Pretty much anything I have said about like beneficial pests, 
any of like the other treatments for pests, you can also use for spider mites. I highly recommend doing the rinsing off, neem oil, and then just keep an eye on it. If it's a bad infestation, don't feel bad about just getting rid of the plant. You don't want to risk infecting your other plants by having one plant having spider mites because it's not worth the stress. If you have 200 plus plants and one plant gets spider mites, do you really want to risk 200 and uh, 200 plants? For spider mites, it'll work the same. Same process. So that's what I recommend, just making sure you check your plants before you bring them into your home. Check them while you're at the store, and then when you bring them into your home, just give them a good rinse, and then quarantine them for like a week, and then bring them in. But I know sometimes some people, like me, are very impatient and just want to get that plant into their spot. Hydrogen peroxide is a good way to get rid of fungus gnats. Use this treatment once a week until they are gone. You can do this treatment by mixing up equal parts of 3% hydrogen peroxide to equal parts of distilled water. And then just thoroughly spray your plants down undersides of the leaves, stems. Make sure you get the soil really good because the larva lives in the soil so you want to make sure you get those. Hydrogen peroxide kills them on contact so I recommend that treatment. Uh, thrips are found in greenhouses and on indoor house plants. They damage plants by sucking out the juices and scraping at the leaves. Plants may turn pale, they can lose leaves, they can turn yellow, they can wilt, they can just look unhealthy. Adults are very small and straw-like colored, almost a light tan color. They're elongated, they're kind of longer. Um, they're extremely active. Thrips feed in large groups. They, these guys, I haven't had experience with them yet. I just know they're mostly common. So I hope this helps because I have no idea on how to get rid of them. I just watched a couple videos and did my research on these guys a little bit just to give you guys a little bit of information because I haven't dealt with them myself. They leap or fly away when disturbed. In the spring, females insert eggs into crevices of your plant, into the tissue of your plant, and then when the nymphs are born, they kind of just feed off the leaf off your plant, and then eventually just kill off your kill off your plant. I hope my plants never get thrips. Each female can lay up to 80 eggs, which can hatch in days. Oh my god. That's fast. That would be a huge infestation if it got out of hand for anyone. So if you guys have thrips anywhere, if you notice them, I would definitely hop on that right away. The entire life cycle from egg to adult is 16 days in warm weather. No thanks. Mm -mm. Nope, I hope you guys have never dealt with thrips. If you have, let me know below and how you guys got rid of them in your best way because I just want to know just in case. But I have a few ideas here, but let me know your best way just in case my plants ever get them. Thrip management is a matter of maintenance. Reducing the places and spaces and areas and anywhere they can mate, breed, lay the eggs, do whatever they do to ruin your plant. It is better to just make sure your plants are clean, the soil is good, the plant is healthy, it is, and pests are attracted to stressed out plants. So making sure your plant is free of debris while the, you know, like if say you lose some leaves and it's in the pot, make sure you're getting it while it's still green because as that leaf deteriorates and rots, that is what the thrips are attracted to. And that is what can cause your infestation of thrips. Spotting problems and responding to them very quickly is key to managing and to managing and infestation super quickly. Make sure you're checking your plants for damage or clusters just to see if and what pest you're dealing with. If a pest at all, it could be something completely irrelevant to pests. But right now, we're talking about pests. So, just check your plants. Make sure you're keeping up with your cleaning. Make sure you're not over watering or over fertilizing. 
You guys can do a nice wipe off of your leaves with the leaf shine or neem oil. And then the treatment for our thrips, start by rinsing off your plant, inspect your plants before you bring them home. You can use the treatments from all the other pests I've been talking about today. So just rinse your plants off. You can use beneficial insects for your thrip problem. You can use neem oil, insecticidal soap, just about everything I talked about already you can use for thrips. If you have any input on this pest management clip, let me know in the comments below. Pest prevention is pretty much just keeping up with maintenance on your plants. Making sure the debris that falls off of your plants is picked up is a good way. Also, making sure you don't overwater your plants. Just let your plants show you signs that it needs watered. This will be curling leaves, yellowing leaves, crispy leaves. It's better to underwater than it is to overwater in some cases. You can also bottom water your plants. I like to bottom water. I'll show you guys how to do that here in a second. So what you're pretty much going to do, you're going to grab a bowl, fill it up to the halfway point, and then just place your plant. Rinsing your plants off in the shower or if they're small enough to fit in your sink, just rinsing them off real fast will help keep pests away and keep your plants clean and make sure they're getting enough light because it gets the dirt off the top of the leaves so they can take in more light. Using neem oil to clean your plants as well will help prevent pests by giving them like a little bit of a repellent in a way. You can do this by spraying neem oil directly onto a microfiber towel and just wiping off the top side, the bottom side, and the stems. I hope this guide to identifying, treating, and preventing these common pests have helped you guys. Thank you for watching and coming back and checking my channel out. It really means a lot to me. Please be sure to subscribe, click that thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. It really helps my channel grow and flourish just like our plants. You guys are freaking amazing. I'll see you in the next one. Happy planting.